Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with Developer University. For more of my training videos for beginners, please visit me at devview.com. In this lesson, I want to show how to create and how to then call simple methods. Now, creating methods are going to help us with a number of different things as we write more interesting applications. Methods are going to help us organize our code better. They're going to eliminate duplicate code and the need to copy something we did earlier and paste it later in our code base. They're going to allow us then to take a certain feature or functionality in our application and give it a name and then call it by its name anywhere in our application. Uh, and then if we were to ever need to update or fix an issue with our method, with that code that's encapsulated in a method, we get to do it one place instead of changing it everywhere we copied and pasted our code. Uh, so remember what we said at the very outset of this course, that a method is merely a block of code as defined by curly braces, and it has a name. And since it has a name, we can call it by its name in order to invoke that code defined in its code block. So uh, methods are actually one of the most important building blocks that we're going to learn in this course and it will allow us to build more interesting and complex applications. So this is definitely something that we need to understand thoroughly. So to begin, you'll notice that I've already created a project called Simple Method. Please take a moment, create a new console window project and catch up with me. And what I'm going to do is build the most simple example I can possibly imagine, a simple Hello World application again, but this time using a method. All right. And we're going to define our method, our helper method, inside of our class program, because remember, we're going to keep methods inside of the context of a class. Related methods kind of go together in the same class. Uh, we'll expand on that later. But it should be outside of the definition of our previous method, the static void main. So I'm going to go right to the end of the closing curly braces for static void main, and I'm going to hit enter a couple of times on my keyboard. That should put my mouse cursor after static void main's definition, but before the end of our class program's closing curly brace. So somewhere in this area is where we want to work, all right? And we have to define things in the right place, just like we learned before. And here, let's create our first very simple helper method. All right, and that's all it takes. Now, I'll explain the word private when we talk about accessibility modifiers and classes. We'll talk about the word static much later in this course. However, just to let you know, it has more to do with building console window applications than typically what you might find yourself using in a, in a different style of application. But we'll talk about it later. The void is something that's important. We'll talk about that in just a few moments here. I'm going to create a block of code, and then I'm going to give it a name. In this case, the name is simple, Hello World. Additionally, I'm going to give it an opening and closing parentheses, and we'll look at what those are used for here in just a moment. Uh, however, then in the body, I'm simply going to just write any of the code that I need my hello world function to do. Now, in this case, one line of code, very simple, but hopefully you get the idea. Now, how do I call that method? How do I execute it from my static void main? Well, remember, it has a name, and we can call it by its name in order to invoke it. But remember, there's one other piece of information that, uh, that we, we need to provide here. Not only do we need to give it the name of the method that we want to invoke, but also we need to use the, uh, the method invocation operators, which are the opening and closing parentheses in this context. All right. So now we've called our method and we expect output in the console window. Now I'm going to go ahead and add one more line of code just so we can see our result like we always do. And now when we run our application, we will get the unexciting results, hello world. But the most important part of this was to create the simplest example we possibly could. And now that you see how easy it is to create a method and how easy it is to call the method, let's go ahead and uh, shut down that project. And instead, what I want you to do is open up the project 
and you should be able to find this where you're currently watching this video, wherever you originally downloaded from, there should be source code available. You should be able to find that source code in the before folder for lesson 10. Copy that helper methods project folder into your projects directory or somewhere on your hard drive and then you can open it up from there. So I've already got this opened up here and you can see that I've created a simple name game application and again this is simple but at least there's more code that we can use to demonstrate how useful methods can be for us. So it's just going to ask us for our name and then where we were born and then we're going to use the little algorithm I guess you could call from the previous lesson where we learned how to take a string, how to convert it into an array of characters, how to reverse the uh, the order of each of the characters in the array and then display it back out to the console window. And so that's what we have here in our results, Oak Park, Tabor Bob, spelled backwards. Okay. Now in order to accomplish this, uh, I have what, thir from lines 13 to lines 56, so about 43 lines of code. And admittedly, uh, I made this longer than it probably needs to be, but notice the amount of duplicate code uh, that I've introduced into the application. Here's where I am retrieving the first name and the last name and the city. And those are essentially the same, even though what I'm collecting is a little bit different, but it's only two lines of code, so that doesn't hurt much, right? Here, we are actually taking the first name or the last name or the city, and we're going to do the reverse operation on it. And we do that three times, and there's the third one. And then what we're going to do is print out the result into a, uh, into a string called result, which will then output in a console.write line. But notice here, we're essentially doing the same thing here and here and then again here. So there's a lot of duplication. Now duplicate code in and of itself is not a huge problem. I mean, there's really no way you can completely eliminate duplicate code in your application. But Duplicate code is usually the result of copying and pasting code. So you've, you've invented the wheel earlier in your code base, and your first thought is, well, I'll just copy and paste it because I need it here and here and here in my code. Now, invariably what happens is your intent is to copy it, but to make a few subtle changes to it. And in your haste, frequently, at least if you're like me, you will forget and you'll make a mistake and forget to change something and you've introduced a bug and it can steal your soul, like even if it's just seconds, but what if it's minutes or even hours of your time trying to figure out why you have a, a weird problem with your application. So copy and paste is dangerous. You should always treat it with great suspicion. But in addition to that, if you have the same code repeated multiple times, then whenever there's a change that's requested in how our application works we're gonna to have to change it in multiple places uh, but what if we were to take some of this functionality like this for example and, and this and we were to extract it out and put it into its own method and then just call it three times uh, first of all it would reduce our need for copy and paste if we needed to fix a problem with our code, we can do it in one place. And then also, if we were to give that, a, uh, that method a meaningful name in our system, it would describe what we're attempting to accomplish. Right now, we're just filtering through lines of code, and it's a little bit more difficult to ascertain quickly what this application is attempting to do. Um, but if we were to maybe give our methods nice meaningful names, it might read more like a paragraph of English instead of a bunch of disparate lines of C-sharp code. So that's the goal. Now the second reason we might want to break this up into methods is to simplify the readability of the code. We already talked about making it more human readable, but also there's a lot of lines of code here that we have to parse through to kind of understand what's going on. And if we can reduce the amount of code to, to read, then we can improve the readability of our code. We want to reduce bloat every time we have the opportunity, all right? So we should strive to make our code readable, clean, clear, and uh, perform well and maintainable so that if we need to make a change, we can do it in one place, and methods help us accomplish all of those things. So let's do this. Let's, uh, let's create a method. We've already learned how to do that. I'm going to go somewhere between 
the end of our static void main, but before the end of our program class, I'm going to define a private void, whoops, private static void reverse string, like so. And what I'll do is copy uh, some of the work that we've done here. For example, lines 24 and 25. And I'll paste those here in our new method. And then I'm going to copy the, the code that we use to actually print all these out to screen. And I'll paste those here as well in our reverse string method. Now to be to get started here, just to make sure that this method's going to work, I'm going to hard code the message. So I'm going to create string message equals hello world, and then uh, I will change first name to just message throughout. All right, and first name array to message array, and we'll hit control period to rename, like we learned about before, and then finally, uh, what I could do is gather up all of the individual items printed out in reverse order using this for each or I could just go here and go console.write each item like so and that'll accomplish at least for now the same thing. Now that I have this working I want to comment out everything I've done up to this point so that I can kind of isolate and then we'll start reintroducing things back in as we uh, as we get them working. So I'm going to call the reverse string method by using the name of the method and then also, again, method invocation operator and then obviously the end of line character and I'm going to go ahead and hit start. And not a very exciting example, but now we know that the logic of our method, of our reverse string method is working. So what I'd really like to do is make this a reusable method. Currently right now it's all not all that useful. Uh, how many times do I need to print hello world in an application? But if I were to remove this line of code here and replace it with an input parameter so that the caller can pass in the string that it wants reversed, now I improve the, uh, the, the usability of this method dramatically. To create an input parameter, I need to give it a data type and then a moniker or a name. And so what I'll do is say, I'm going to allow the caller to pass in a string, and internally I'm going to call that string message. So I'm creating essentially a variable uh, that allows an outside passage of code to pass values into the body of my method. I can utilize that value inside of my method and then um, hopefully as a result of that achieve some more interesting results. Now having done that I've changed the signature of the method. I used to have just a, a method called reverse string but it accepted no input parameters but now I have to accept one input parameter and that's not optional so I get this red squiggly line beneath the reverse string and if I were to hover my mouse cursor over it's going to say there's no argument given that corresponds to the required formal parameter message of and you're like well what does that mean essentially we did not call the method correctly now because we have to give it something like a, a hard-coded string or probably the better thing to do here would be to give it you know the first name that we collect way up here in lines number 16 and 17 let me uncomment that out and kind of go down here and comment. Uh, so now I'm collecting the first and last name of the city, but everything else I'll leave commented out for now. Eventually we'll remove them. And I'm going to call this reverse string method three times. Each time I'm going to change what I'm passing in, like so. And now when I run the application, well, let's do this as well. Let me copy that and I'm going to so that I can get similar results. Let's go ahead and remove that and let's save the application now. Make sure you have what I have on screen. Pause the video if you need to. Let's run the application and let's see it working and it should work similar to what we had before but with fewer lines of code. And it mostly works but you notice there's a subtle problem with this. There's no space in between Oak Park, Tabor, and Bob. And so this is a good example of where I can make a change one place in my code and it will fix the problem throughout 
the code base wherever I'm using and calling my new method. To fix this problem, all I need to do is do a console write and then add in a blank character. That should allow a sufficient spacing in between each call to reverse string. So now when I run the application and I put in my details, Bob Tabor and Oak Park, it should work correctly, and it does. Great. Okay, so now this is definitely one way to go about writing this application. As I look at this method, reverse string, I see a problem. Typically, whenever I create methods, I attempt to describe in English what that method is responsible for doing inside of my software system. In this case, I would describe the functionality of this method as it reverses a string and it prints it to screen. But Herein lies the problem. I really only want each method to do one thing in my system. And when I use the word and, and print it to screen, I feel like that's two responsibilities in the system. So typically what I would do is split this out into two separate methods. And you might say, well, that's a little excessive, and that's true in this simple case. But following that rule of thumb will help you as you begin to think about how to compose methods. What goes into a method? How many methods should I write? Should I just create one massive method or lots of tiny methods? And typically the answer is more smaller methods with descriptive names are better. Okay. So in this case, what we're going to do is change up the functionality of the application a little bit. Um, what I'll do is take out all of this... Uh, where I'm actually doing the writing to screen. And what I want reverse string now to do is accept an input string and then return or report back giving the result to the caller. So in other words, right now we're using the void keyword, which means I want you to go off and do something, but please don't report back to me. I don't care what you have to say. I don't need to know anything from you. You just go, you work, you be quiet when you end, and everything is great. However, we might want to change this and say, instead of being quiet when you finish your job, I want you to report back to me what the results were of what you did. So in this case, I might want to say, return back to me the reversed string. So I'm going to give you a string, and then what I, I want you to return to me is a string that's been reversed. All right. Notice when I added or changed void to string, I get a red squiggly line because I have not officially returned anything back to, uh, to the caller. I need to use the return keyword, like so. All right. And I could do a for each and gather up each individual item into a longer string like we've done, you know, pretty much previously right here by building that result. However, there is an easy way to do this with just one line of code. Just like there is in a, a helper method called reverse on the array class, there's also a string class, and the string class has helper methods too. One of them is the concat method, and it will allow us to pass in an array of individual characters and it will concatenate them all together and return back a full string. So in this case, let's just give it the message array like so and that should work just fine. Okay, now notice that I'm able to call reverse string and I'm, I, I'm not really accepting back any values. Now why is that? I thought if we were going to say, hey, report back to me, that I would need to do something with it. Uh, in other words, I would expect to see something like this, right, where I'm capturing whatever has been returned from the reverse string method. That's optional. I can listen for it and retrieve it and save it or do something with it, or I can ignore it. In this case, what I would probably want to do is actually save it. So uh, I would call this reversed first name, like so, and then string reversed last name equals, and then um, string reversed city equals. All right, and I'll we'll we'll shorten this up in a moment, but hopefully you'll see where I'm going with this. All right, and then what I can do is console dot write. Uh, right line, or just here, let's just do right, uh, reversed first name plus space, and this seems kind of laborious uh, to do it this way. I've got a better idea. You know, the string 
has another helper method. We looked at the concat method, but it also has a format. And the format will work a lot like console.writeLine. In fact, they're almost identical. The only difference is console.writeLine will print its results to screen, whereas string.format will merely just uh, create a new string as a result of whatever been formatted. But the reason I'm using this is so that I can use the replacement codes like so. So here I go 0, 1, and 2, and I can pass in reversed first name, reversed last name, or re and reversed city, like so. Since that is off to the right hand side of my screen, I can't easily see it. Typically what I'll do is move each of the input parameters uh, to the method, in this case console.write, I'll move them to separate lines to increase the readability. Okay, And notice that they're indented a little bit, but this is all essentially one line of code, even though it's spread on four lines. But it improves readability because I don't want to have to scroll off to the right hand side of the screen in order to read my work. So get in the, in the, in the habit of formatting your code for readability and keep things kind of narrow and small. And if they do go off to the side of the screen, um, you know, don't be afraid to move things down to different lines to increase the readability. Okay, so now let's see what we have. Uh, this should work. Let's run the application. And it works. Great. But what if I want to put this into its own method? Uh, I could simply do that like so. And I think I can just use a void in this case. And what I could do is go display result, like so. And I could just take this and paste it in. But now what I need to do is pass in these three values, right? So how do I go about doing that? Well, we know how to add one input parameter. How do we add multiple input parameters? So uh, what we'll do is define our first one, reversed first name, like so. And then to add subsequent input parameters, I'll just use a comma on my keyboard and add the second one, like so. And then the third one, like so. All right. And again, since it's off to the right-hand side of the screen, I might put my mouse cursor right before the S in string and move those input parameters below the definition for our display result method. Again, for readability's sake. You may not agree. You don't have to. That's a stylistic choice. Uh, and so at this point, I should be able then to call display result. So let's call display result. Passing in the reversed first name. And I just happen to use the same names here, but I could have called either the input parameter something different or the, uh, the temporary variables here something different. Uh, reverse string, last name. And you know, as I'm doing this, I'm beginning to think to myself, why am I even going through all of this? Why do I even need these variables? Couldn't I just eliminate those all together and just copy this, and paste it here? I mean, it returns a string, right? So I should be able to do that. And I should be able to do this. And I should be able to do this, like so. And then I will put them each on their little line. And that should work just fine. And here I can eliminate these lines of code completely from my application. Let's see if it works. Okay, still works great. Feels like this should probably go into this display result, so that should reduce it from being there. Now, suppose that I don't want to pass in each of these individual values. What if I want to display the result uh, at, and only pass in one value? Uh, what could I do in that case? Well, I I can provide additional ways of calling a method 
by creating what are called overloaded versions of our methods. And in this case, what I'll simply do is I'll start out and just copy and paste the exact same method definition twice. Notice on the second definition I get an error. Let me hover my mouse cursor over so you can see it. Type program, so that's the class program, already defines a member called display result with the same parameter types. So you can create additional versions of the same method with the same name, but they have to have a different method signature. A method signature is the number and the data type of the input parameters in your method definition. So in this case, I already have a method called display result with three strings. I could change these names to just any old, you know, gobbledygook text there, and I still get an error. It's the same problem because the fundamental fact that we've not changed the signature of the method means that I'm still having the same problem. However, I could change this by allowing only a single a single message or a single string to be input as an input parameter and now I have two completely different versions of the method as far as C# -sharp is concerned. Now in this case, uh, I wouldn't need any of this. I'd probably just uh, just do this. So, and then I could um, I could call it by doing this. Basically, what I was trying to avoid last time, but we'll go ahead and do it anyway. Okay, so this time we're passing in one long string. Notice the use of the concatenation operator and the use of some. Uh, some empty spaces defined by two double quotes with just an empty space in between and so we should have two lines that display essentially the same thing here let's make sure we do this right uh, we'll add a right line in between them just to make sure there's a break all right so bottom taper and so we get two results that look identical. Now, you might wonder, why are we doing this? Why in the world would you ever want to create two methods with the exact same name that essentially do the same thing but allow the user to pass in different information? And let me give you a good example of why you might want to do that is with the console.writeline. So here we go with console.writeline. Have you ever noticed as you as you type the opening parenthesis for the method invocation operator that there's a little message that pops up down there that there's one of 19 and then you look to the to the right of it and as I use the arrow keys on my keyboard and go up and down notice that the number goes one two three four five okay these are all the different data types that the right line method will accept so it'll accept an input parameter of type boolean which is true false It'll accept a single character or an array of characters. It'll accept a decimal value, which is usually used for money, or a double, which is used for longer mathematical calculations, or a float, which is a massive number in terms of the number of values after the decimal point. It allows you to pass in an integer and other types of integer style values. It allows you to pass in a string and then others as well. 19 different versions of console.writeline to make it convenient for the user of the application to, to utilize that method in their app, okay? Uh, for the developer of the application to use it in their app. So now when we go to display result, we'll see the same thing in IntelliSense. Display result, and notice that I have two versions. I'm looking at version one of two, and notice the emphasis on the input parameter that the first version accepts one input parameter of type string called message, and then the second version accepts three input parameters of type string, reverse string, reverse last name, and reverse city. Okay, so there you go. That is why you would create overloaded versions of your methods. All right.
Now, in this case, notice that uh, we could eliminate so much of the code from this in order to essentially get uh, the same working results. So I'll just delete that. And, um, you know, for the sake of simplicity, I'll go ahead and remove this as well. And so now we've reduced down the amount of code dramatically uh, for our application and improved the flexibility of our application by adding multiple ways to actually display the results. Okay. So at Developer University, I issue a decree to students that no method should have more than six lines of code in it. If it has more than six lines of code in it, then it's probably attempting to too, do too much in the system. You should be able, again, to express what it's doing in English, and then if you find yourself saying it does this and that, then it's probably an opportunity to split those up into multiple methods. Uh, of course, rules are meant to be broken, and as a rule of thumb, six lines of code per uh, per method will keep your code tidy and readable. It'll keep everything scoped nice and very uh, tightly, and it'll improve the quality of your, of your code dramatically. Okay, so that's all I wanted to say about methods, but we're going to be using them from this point on. So if there's anything about this that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to you, by all means, please make sure that you watch this lesson again or seek out some other resources. Okay, you're doing great. Let's continue on. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you.